And I'm Anna Cole. I'm Mariana Pagano. Hi, Mariana. How are you? We're good. Thanks for taking time out of your day to do this interview with us. We really appreciate it. Of course. No problem. So for starters, we want to know what school are you currently an administrator at? So I'm, a, I'm an administrator in the William Penn School District, which is in Lansdowne. It serves the boroughs of Darby, Cowen, East Lansdowne, Lansdowne, and I'm forgetting one, uh, Yaden. I'm sorry, Yaden. Wow. Yeah. Um, so what did, what did you, what made you want to get into this profession? So that's a great question. Um, you know, um, I don't know. I guess the, the cliche answer is like, I had great teachers along the way um, that inspired me to become a teacher. But I think when I think about it, it's, um, you know, I, I always loved the relationships I had with teachers that weren't really around like school, right? They were just like personal, got to know you on like a, a good level and you had a connection with them. Um, and when I was at O'Hara, I, I had plenty of those people that like really impacted my life. And I think I just wanted to be that type of person for a kid like me that needed, you know, an adult in their life that they could rely on and trust. That's really nice. That's what I feel like a lot of people want in their school experience. So it's nice that you got to experience that as well. Did you first teach before you became a principal? Yep. So my kind of progression was a little bit unique. Um, so I was an eighth grade English teacher um, for about seven years, if you will, um, in the William Penn School District. And then I took a role as um, almost like a dean of students for a year uh, at, at our high school campus. And then last year, uh, I was promoted to assistant principal. And then last summer, um, I took another position uh, in the William Penn School District, the position I'm currently in, which is the supervisor of innovation, personalized learning, and our, our cyber academy, which we have. Um, so I've kind of gone up, I've seen kind of every level, the classroom, the principal, and now I'm in the, the central office working with the superintendent. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a, a good journey, I would say. That seems like a lot of work that you have to go through every day. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's challenging, but I like it, so it's fun. Good. Um, where did you go to college, and what did you take up there? Yep, so that's a great question. So after I left O'Hara, I went to Newman College, um, so another Catholic institution. Uh, I was immediately uh, an education major. And when I was at Newman, because it was, I taught secondary, I wanted to teach secondary, so middle school to high school, what they ask you to do is almost double major. So you're an English major and an education major. Um, and then when I finished at Newman, I started teaching. I went to graduate school at Cabrini College, uh, another Catholic school, and I got my master's in education. And then I went back a few years later and did uh, an additional kind of master's program where I got certified to become a principal, again, at Cabrini. So all I've been Catholic school uh, from start to finish. So, I, I, you know, it's, it's been a great experience. That's awesome. Have you always wanted to teach at Catholic school or were you open to teaching wherever you were best fit? Yeah, I think that's a great question. So, um, you know, I, I never taught in Catholic school. I don't, I wasn't against teaching in Catholic school. Um, you know, I'm a big believer. I know it's corny um, that, you know, everyone kind of has a path and that everything in life, whether it's good or bad happens for a reason. Um, so, you know, when I first graduated college and wanted to become a teacher, it was really difficult to find a job. You had to like substitute and get your foot in the door somewhere. And actually, ironically, I, the first interview I had out of college was at the school district that I work in now, and I didn't get the job. And then four years later, after substituting and working in different places, I applied again and I got the job. Um, so I didn't always want to necessarily teach in Catholic school, but I did always want to teach in areas where I felt that I would be a great fit, where there were kids that were similar to me, um, that grew up similar to me. And I was able to use a lot of my life experiences to kind of help them along the way. Um, so that was that was kind of, I think, my motivation. 
That seems very nice. Um, I like how you you're, you got to where you are now. Um, so obviously you have to deal with a lot of teachers with your occupation and how do you deal with the teacher unions and what is it like? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Nothing, something I didn't expect. Um, so I think my perspective is a little different because I was in a teacher's union. Um, so, you know, working with teachers for me has always been, I think, a little bit less challenging than it maybe would be for other people. Um, because, and specifically in, in my job, in my life, um, so I was a teacher, like I said, in, in the middle school in William Penn, Penwood Middle School. And then when I became a principal, assistant principal, I was a principal at Penwood Middle School. So a lot of the teachers I was dealing with were people that were I was already familiar with, I've already worked with for years, um, and I had already been have a, established like a good professional relationship. Um, and I would always make it a point to remind people that like I, you know, when I was in room 222 teaching English, like I felt the same way, and we have to do this. So I always made that connection, and it always kind of put people at ease. Um, so I think working with teachers and working with teachers union is challenging for some, but it never really was as challenging for me because I always had that connection and that, that previous experience. Wow. Speaking of people, were there any other significant, significant people in your life who have actually helped you get to where you are today? That's a, I mean, that's a great question. No, I did it all by myself. No one helped me at all. No, I'm joking. I'm like, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I am today for a lot of people. You know, obviously my family plays a huge role in it, uh, whether it's my mom growing up. You know, I had four younger brothers and sisters that went to O'Hara. Um, you know, my wife now, my kids, right? They're all like the obvious answers. But if we talk about like really inspirational people that helped me uh, was my disciplinarian, my vice principal at O'Hara. I was a guy by the name of George Stratz. Uh, he's no longer there, Mr. Strats. He was like the football coach and I played football there. And he was also um, my disciplinarian along with Ms. Geiger and Mr. Ketteris, who I think is still there, was also a vice principal at the time, but he wasn't mine. Um, but Mr. Strats really was like um, the father figure that I needed. He was everything that I needed in, a, in an inspirational person and a structure, a structured person. He was very old school. Um, I was the type of kid at O'Hara that before I even walked in the door, I had five and one, you know, I had the shirt tail untucked, no belt, shoes were untied, top button wasn't tied, you know, the whole thing. Um, so I just needed someone like him and he really did a really good job in my opinion of just kind of being me, um, just being firm, but fair. He always knew that I would be honest with him. He always knew that I would take the consequences that I was given. Um, and then I think in addition to that, it's the people I met at O'Hara, not necessarily the teachers. Um, the teachers were great, that's obvious too, but my friends, you know, the one of the great thing about O'Hara is that it brings kids from all different parishes together. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I have the same group of friends that I met in eighth and ninth grade that I, I have right now. You know, I just got off the phone, my, one of my best friends, JC, who was in Mr. Fulcomer's homeroom with me for four years. We were, you know, D4, C4, B4, A4. Um, and I've known him since, you know, freshman orientation or eighth grade day um, at O'Hara. And he's been one of my best friends for the last, you know, 20 years. Um, and our group of friends have been together, you know, since we met in the halls at O'Hara. And I think those are the kids that have like really shaped me, the people, because um, a little bit of them is, you know, rubbed off on me and helped me get to where I am. And um, and I would like to think that the same is true for them, that we're all better for knowing each other. And O'Hara was the one that brought us together. Um, so if we didn't have O'Hara, we never would have met and life could be a little bit different. So I would say those people. That's amazing. Do you think that knowing those friends for so long has shaped you into who you are today and has helped you become who you are? I think, I think it has tremendously, um, you know, how do I want to say this? Um, you know, I went to college, right. And I did the college thing and I have some friends from college still, but still to this day, my closest friends are the kids that I met at O'Hara. Um, and we've been together, like I said, it's like I, my freshman year at O'Hara was in 1999. I'm not even sure if 
either of you were born yet, right? But like um, since 1999, we've been together and we've been in each other's weddings and, you know, with each other and, and ups and downs, whether it was someone's death in someone's family or kids being born. Um, you know, my kids call my friends uncle, you know, Uncle Kyle, Uncle Jace, Uncle Uncle John John. You know, these are all kids that are, you know, unfortunately St. Dots kids. I don't know what parish you guys are from, but um, all of them are from St. Dots and uh, they've all been my friends for a really long time. And they definitely have been um, really impactful in my life and, you know, who I am as a person. Wow, you must have made really good friends in high school. Um, yeah. So what is the most rewarding part of your job? Um, I guess the easiest answer is like the, the relationships you develop with the people that you interact with. Um, you know, the hard, and the hardest part about taking the job that I'm currently in now is that I'm more in like an office. Um, and I deal with adults uh, a lot. Whereas like I got all my energy and all my passion and my, you know, kind of adrenaline through the day and working with kids. So the, the most rewarding part about my job is, you know, um, working with kids and seeing the impact that you can make on their lives on a daily basis and seeing how helpful um, you are, you know, at that time. Um, but the really impactful thing I think is, you know, who those people become. Right. I'd like to think if you ask any of my teachers, you know, um, what if they could measure their impact on me, they would probably tell you, let me see where he is in 10, 15 years. And I think that's the greatest measure of a teacher or the people that you interact with. So on a daily basis, it's it's the most rewarding thing, just knowing that you help someone. But having a kid come back after 10 years of being in your eighth grade classroom and they're saying, you know, Mr. Denenza, I still remember the lesson you did on this date around this subject, and it really helped me. And it, um, it really made me become a good person or, or whatever it is. That's the, the greatest thing. And I think if I remember, and I'm sorry I'm talking so much, but uh, a few years ago, I was at a football game. I was at a Penwood versus Academy Park football game, and Academy Park's our rival. Uh, and I did like a brief kind of long-term substitute job at Academy Park and I was like walking to you know into into the game and uh a kid just like screamed my name like Mr. D and it, it was like a grown man the kid had like a beard he was like bigger than me I was like I have no idea who this is and like ran up to me gave me a hug and I was able to look at him for a second and like figure out who it was and he's like sat there for like 15 minutes just telling me like I remember in ninth grade when you did this and you said that and that helped me become a graphic designer because you know you never gave me a hard time for like doodling and stuff you always told me to like do it but get your work done at the same time so it was like something that small um that someone remembered that really makes you just kind of sit back and be like wow like how lucky am i to have that impact on someone's life that's amazing and you can keep talking all you want no okay. I'm stopping you and uh, i'm sorry no no it's fine and when you said that you interact with more adults than you do students sometimes, is it easier to interact with the adults or the students? For me, it's easier to interact with the students um, because I think the reason I try to be such a good teacher, educator, if you will, is because I was such a difficult student. Um, and I think I'm stuck some in some ways in my brain as like a middle school, high school kid. Um, and trust me, I don't, I don't know if any teachers that I had are still there. I think probably a few at this point, but you know, I was on, you know, discipline probation at the end of every year. I always had to like clean up the fair when all my friends were like, go home. I was like picking up trash. Like I, I was the kid that like got in all the trouble um, and, you know, was on probation during the school year and things like that. So I was just a handful. And I think now it's paid off because I see that in other kids um, and interacting with other kids is it, those kids and all kids, whether they're, you know, get in trouble or they don't, it's always easier for me. Um, like for, I've been on like Zoom calls, meetings all day with adults, and I've had far more interaction and engaging like feedback with YouTube for the last 15 minutes than I've had with all the adults that I've seen today. Um, so yeah, I definitely interact and, and engage better with kids than I do with adults. 
Oh, that's very, very nice. Um, so obviously you have a lot of difficulties in your job. What are they? Yeah, I think that's that's big. So I think this year, obviously, all of us were faced with a lot of challenges. Um, so, you know, one of my responsibilities from the start was how do I make sure that the kids in my school district um, and with the teachers and parents and all the community members, how do they get a, 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 an, a, an amazing education given the restraints that we have? You know, we can't be close to one another. You know, schools, you know, on Zoom or whatever it is. Um, so that immediate challenge was like the biggest thing that I had to try to figure out. So what we did was with my superintendent and other, you know, work um, colleagues and teachers and students, we, we put together kind of a technology package. So in preparation for all of our kids to come back to school, um, what we did was we installed cameras and audio equipment and microphones into all the classrooms, which really allow kids to have that hybrid experience. Um, and, you know, in addition to giving every kid in our school district a Chromebook, uh, we really were able to provide them a level of technology that we've never been able to do before. So although it was really challenging and trying to figure out all the logistics and frustrations along the way, when we were able to overcome those things, it really paid off. And uh, our community members seemed really excited about how much support they've received, um, given you know the circumstances that all of us are in due to the pandemic. So um, that's a challenging thing. My, but you know, I took my job knowing that you know one of the the titles that I have is like supervisor of innovation, and people are like, "What does that mean?" And I'm like, my daughter who's six asked me like, "What does that mean?" And I'm like, "Well, innovation is helping people solve problems in non traditional ways, right?" So it's, it's thinking outside the box to figure out solutions. So my job is like problem solving um, to a certain extent. So I knew that it would be a job full of challenges and obstacles, but um, I took it because of that, because I like overcoming things and I like having, you know, the determination and the persistence to achieve what you need to achieve. Um, so, you know, I think that's, that's, I guess the best response I probably could give to that, that question. Good. Even though it's so challenging, it must be very rewarding to be able to help all these people, especially during this crazy time we're experiencing. So with COVID, that has hit very hard and has, must have been very difficult for your school and most schools, all schools. How do you think it will be in fall? So I, I tend to be, and it's hard to be this way sometimes, but I tend to be an optimist and try to find silver linings and everything. Um, and I think there are a lot of really good things that have come from this experience, right? Obviously, there's a lot of very negative things and sad things um, and frustrating things, right? But if we kind of set those aside for a second and look at some positive things that have come out of this, right? Um, you know, as we move forward toward the fall, I don't know if if every kid will be back in school in the fall, right? I, I just don't know if that's gonna happen. So um, I think the really good thing is that we're now in a position to support kids wherever they wanna learn. So if they wanna learn in the classroom, they can. If they wanna learn from home, if they, they can. If they wanna come to schools, you know, two days a week, they can. Um, and be online the other couple days, three days a week, they can. So we've really done a good job in our school district of identifying what we call personalized learning pathways so that kids can design the kind of level of school that they want to have. Um, and I think that wouldn't have happened had we not been forced into this kind of experience uh, with technology. And I think the other thing, you know, that's really, really helped us um, is that kids are so much more, you know, and I don't know if this is just like, I try to tell my kids when I was in school, like cell phones didn't exist the way they exist now, even when I was in high school. Like if you wanted to like, send a note to someone in school in class, you had to like pass a note. Like you didn't, you couldn't just text them in your pocket, right? Um, or whatever it is. But I think, you know, uh, technology education has really kind of taken off, right? It's accelerated. Like my daughter who's in kindergarten, she does all this thing in Google Meets that like, I, I don't know how to do. She's like using, you know, shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts to mute herself and turn her camera on, right? And I'm like, wow, you're teaching me things and you're six years old. Um, so I think that's a huge, uh, a huge benefit to this. And I think for teachers too, you know, teachers, um, 
you know, they were forced to kind of adapt and kind of be resilient and figure out how to support kids in a different way. Right. Um, you know, some a lot of teachers are used to just standing in front of a classroom and just teaching and lecturing. And with with uh, COVID, you can't do that. You have to find different ways to engage with students and um, make them enjoy learning. So I think it really helped teachers, although I'm sure it's extremely frustrating and challenging. I think in the long run, they'll be better for it because now they know different ways and using technology, how to engage with kids, how to communicate with kids and students and family members. Um, and then you all, like you all are, are this, you know, this is going to, especially at the high school level, it's just going to prepare you even more for college or careers if you're going to go into the work field um, right after high school. So it's, it's really had a positive effect in a lot of different areas. Um, you know, in my community specifically where I teach, you know, it provided us a lot of opportunity to give our community members technology that they never had access to before. Um, you know, the William Penn School District is a very diverse place. Um, it's a very diverse kind of socioeconomic makeup. Um, some people um, have a lot of means and have the ability to kind of go out and buy a new computer if they do, and some people don't. Um, but the school district really did a tremendous job of providing everyone a Chromebook and providing people access to technology or internet um, or Wi-Fi that they never had before, uh, which I think is really powerful. And it's something that's going to be longstanding. It's not just like, all right, pandemic's over. You get none of that stuff anymore. Forget all that stuff. Um, now it's just with everybody forever. Um, and I think that's, you know, those are a couple of good kind of silver linings to this whole challenging situation that we're in. It seems like your school is very handling this very well. Um, uh, do you think COVID will permanently affect your job and your students' learning experience at all? Oh, I think, yeah, I think 100%. How it'll affect my job is that um, I don't know that my job would have existed, you know, a few years ago the way it does now. Um, specifically, you know, my job is, you know, cr creating personalized learning pathways for kids and using technology and different innovative tools to solve problems. Um, so I think it's been a really, for me, it's been a really advantageous, advantageous uh, position to be in because I'm kind of the, the, um, the point person to handle a lot of these kind of technology and, and instructional technology problems in our school district or challenges, excuse me. Um, for kids, I mean, yeah, it's definitely going to impact them in both positive and negative ways, right? So the positive ways I mentioned with technology, uh, you know, they're going to be there forever. Uh, the opportunity to engage with teachers and learning in a different way um, are going to be there forever. Um, but also, you know, from a negative standpoint, you know, not to just to be honest with you, like it, it's the hardest part. I think one of the harder parts that, you know, I didn't mention this earlier, but one of the harder parts for me as an educator is knowing that my kids are suffering, right? Even if they're, they're smiling on screen, you know, they're, they're there every day in school, you know, the isolation is not, it's not what we're meant to do. We're not meant to be people that just kind of sit on Zoom screens or Google Meet screens, right? And just interact with each other. We and me as a as a person, like I was the teacher in the or the principal and the teacher in the hallway. It was like high fiving kids and like shaking hands and like you know doing all the you know the extra stuff um, in the hallway that you know kids are like, what are you doing? Like, why are you doing that, all that? Um, but and now we don't have any of that. And now that you know, even when we're in person together, we have to stay far apart from each other. And I think that that's going to weigh on people. And I think it already has. Um, so we in our school district, and I know in many school districts, we've really taken a, a really hard look at how we help kids from a social and emotional standpoint, how we deal with mental health, whether it's for our kids and our teachers and our community members, um, because some of those negative, negative effects are going to impact people um, for a really long time. And, you know, in my generation, you know, I can remember sitting in Miss Green's history class. Um, when we saw 9-11 happen on TV, you know, right after Channel One News, like literally, I don't know how to explain where this classroom is, but it's like, it's in the main hall of that one hallway. I can't, I won't even, I won't even get into it. But I remember sitting in that class and watching the towers get hit and watching the towers fall. And of my generation, like that was our traumatic moment. Um, and I think for you all, not that everyone needs a traumatic moment or deserves one, because none of us do, but I think this is your kind of traumatic moment. And I think 
you know, that moment defined my life in positive and negative ways. And I think the same is going to happen from COVID. It's going to, it's going to impact everyone's li lives from a positive and a negative way. Um, so, yeah, I think, I think those are like the longstanding impacts that are going to, you know, be, be felt from COVID-19 and, and the pandemic in general. Yeah, I definitely understand where you're coming from. Like, there's definitely have been positive things and negative things about it. Like, personally, I've gotten closer to friends through this, but I also haven't been able to see them in person. And I can't, like, hug my friends or, or in school teachers. I'm always like, hi, how are you doing? But it's hard to talk to them every day, especially if you don't have them as a teacher this right. year. Because some teachers I had last year, I can't even speak to them anymore. And it's, it's kind of hard to deal with. And yeah. so to conclude this interview, why did you want to take part in this interview? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess that I kind of said it in a lot of my answers, but, you know, it's probably a couple of reasons, right? Like I wanted to show kids and I, I'm not the only one. And like my life wasn't really that hard when I think about it, but like, I never really liked school. Like I wasn't someone that was like into school, wasn't necessarily a great student. I think I could have been a great student. I just never was really engaged in it. And I don't know why. And I told you, like, I got in a ton of trouble. Um, but I, I've really like, if you were to ask people that I graduated high school with, you know, or tell people what I do now for a living, their minds would explode. They were like, no way, not even possible. That kid that person, if you were to ask teachers, they would probably say the same exact thing. Like, there's no way that Warren Denenza works with kids. Like, who in their right mind would let that guy work with children, like, knowing who he was and what he did? Um, and I think, I think that's one of the reasons, not, like, selfishly, like, I want to show off, like, look what I've become. But, like, it's to kind of show, like, you know, even if school's not for you, right, and even if school's not easy for whatever reason, um, if you really kind of step back and think about things, like it's not necessarily about like the schoolwork, it's the community that you're in and it's the people that are around that ultimately kind of shape your life. And I, I don't know that I'd be in the place that I am today if I didn't have O'Hara and if I didn't have the opportunity to meet the people I did there. Um, and I think that, you know, I wanted to do this interview one, because um, I wanted to kind of tell kids that like you could start anywhere. It doesn't matter what your beginning is. You know, it's not going to define your end. Uh, it's the work that you do in between that's going to get you where you want to be. And I think that doing this interview has allowed me to kind of reflect on that and seeing, you know, where I've come, where I started and where I've come or where I've got to, um, not where I've ended, hopefully, um, but where I've gotten to. And it's allowed me to kind of think on like, you know, all the people that helped me got get there uh, where I where I am today. And and like I said, if it wasn't for people like George Strats and the friends that I have and the discipline, right? The demerits, um, they really helped me a lot. Um, but just kind of that whole atmosphere and the whole community feel that I was given at a young age has really developed uh, who I am today. And although I might not be able to give you know, money back to the school. I wanted to give opportunity and education and connection and just be a part of the alumni community to help kids that might be like me. There might be a kid that might see this video and be like, that dude, that dude sounds like me. Um, but, you know, I get in trouble all the time, you, you know, so on and so forth. And it might, you know, a hundred kids might see this. If one kid sees it and it impacts them positively, it was all worth it. And I didn't want to take that opportunity away. Um, so I guess that's why. I'm sure that's, oh, sorry, Mariana. No, you're good. It seems very, you're very inspirational. Sorry. Well, thank, thank you. you. This was just a great learning experience for us. And I think definitely so many people need to hear what you've said. And like some people, they may not be doing great in school now, but they could just have such a successful life when they're older, like you are, and just enjoy what they're doing. They may be having hard times, but it'll turn into great times later. I yeah. Think. And I'll tell you something that someone told me, you know, I like playing football at Ohio, you're always kind of friends with some older kids. Um, and, uh, you know, a couple of kids that graduated before me, you know, when I was still in high school and I was in that, that mindset of like, 
man, I can't wait to get done school and go to college and like never have to deal with the hard demerits and strats and none of that stuff ever again. And the older kid that I was talking to at the time was like, listen, he's like, it's the fastest four years of your life. And as soon as you get out of there, you're going to wish you were back there in a heartbeat. And I never, at the time I was like, that's not true. That's not me. I won't be like that. And it is true. Um, and I don't know. And I'd like to think, to be honest with you, that it's an O'Hara thing. It's not just a high school thing that it's, uh, you don't, you don't recognize it when you're in it, how much you'll miss it when it's gone. Um, and I think that, you know, I, I hope that, you know, someone hears that and is able to think about it. Um, and I think, you know, that's probably the answer I should have gave of like why you wanted to do this, because I, I want to make sure that people understand that because, you know, it's such a special place. Um, it's frustrating sometimes when you're there, right? But at the end of the day, it's home. Um, and you're going to think back in 10, 15 years how much it shaped you as a person and be so grateful for it and wish you could just give back to it. Um, and that's what I hope I was able to do today.